The good thing is, though, for United, is that their city rivals are really struggling uh -huh. uh, at the moment. <laughs> uh, Manchester City, of course, in action against uh, Bournemouth, 4-0. Uh, uh, this was an absolute cruise uh, for Pep Guardiola's side. Uh, Jan, you were there. Tell me how good Kevin De Bruyne was today. Uh, he was unbelievable. I, 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 I interviewed him after the game and I called him the Belgium dancing queen. I mean, uh, the way he was just dancing through it there and how he described it, how, how he looked for movements and then he decided I would score it and he made everything so simple. I mean, this is one of the best players in the world mm. and yes, we all rate him, but maybe because of his... Uh, he's not a typical superstar for you. So he will never come up big time in these great uh, awards that Craig Burley loves. But he is fantastic. And the way Manchester City did it today against the five backline, five man backline at Bournemouth, it's hard to come through. But in the first time, they did exactly what they should do being patient. There was a a ball possession of, I guess, around 80% that they were just hammering. They were just going there and they got more and more uh, tired. And uh, Scott Parker uh, told me after the game, well, what can we do? Mm. We can't get hold of the ball, you know? And, and that is Manchester City at their best. And Manchester City got six points now. Liverpool got one. And we may say this is <laughs> after two rounds. Yeah, but you know, I'm just saying, because we've seen the last years that it's been one or two or three points who's decided the you know, championship. But that Liverpool I, I, haven't played yet. Yeah, and calm down. And they Monday. No, <laughs> let, if, you, if you let me end the sentence, I will say that. It's, it's just showing you how exciting it is that on Monday they're playing Crystal Palace and you just feel they have to win. That's what we love the Premier League. Uh, Erling Haaland with just the assist today. No goals, mm. Ali, but you were talking before about the impact that he still makes. Well, he, his presence on the field forces decisions from defensive players. And in the goal by Kevin De Bruyne, as De Bruyne is going at the defender, Jefferson Lerma, who is dropping off as a midfielder and helping out the back line, is now addressing the run of uh, Erling Haaland, or the presence of Erling Haaland, to the point to where you see him step into his right because he knows, OK, Haaland is here, I'm going to block this passing lane. But in doing that, then opens up the space for Kevin De Bruyne to cut to the inside and slap the ball with the outside of his foot. Now, it's a great finish by Kevin De Bruyne, world-class player, world-class finish, but overall you just see the impact of Erling Haaland just being there. The threat of Erling Haaland being there is going to force defenders into decisions, and that's when you allow then 1v1 situations for everybody else. It's all just a big nightmare for defenders, isn't it? Yeah, and the other thing that Haaland does is his runs are the runs of a proper centre-forward. Mm -hmm. It's one thing when you've got the invisible nine or whatever you want to call it, yep. And they make F runs. False nine. False Sorry, nine. the false nine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Can't hear, but. but the invisible nine is invisible a great nine. player too. Ah, that's, I wouldn't mind being that. <laughs> <laughs> but his his runs are great runs. You know, right. the, the, there's one thing to have movement, but if they're just airy fairy and all over the shop, then you know sometimes defenders can just let you go because you're running away from goal or something like that. Yeah. Whereas this guy always runs where he thinks. A, he's going to get it, and B, it's the most advantage for the guy on the ball. I mean, it, it just gets worse for defences in the Premier League. Yeah? Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, he had very few touches today, and it's also that Pep Guardiola says when he doesn't have a lot of touches, he doesn't want him to wander down in midfield because, I got, like Pep uh, said at the press conference, I got enough players there. So uh, I think there was one situation that could be uh, is interesting is when Foden doesn't play him. Uh, when he comes one against one against a goalkeeper mm. and it's just to, to take it over to, um, to Erling and Erling would have had an easy goal as a goal getters like. And at halftime, Pep took Foden off. I'm not saying that uh, that was the reason, but that, that is quite interesting. Okay, fair enough. Foden wants to score, and, and he's been there, but but a goal getter never uh, likes there. But uh, yeah, De Bruyne as well is goal. Is some of his runs, and I think the, the thing is when you play with that kind of number nine, you will always g get the defenders tired. They will always chase you, and they will always try to double up on the striker because he will keep it, and then they will come after him. So, so they got six goals now, and uh, Erling Haaland got two of them and one assist. So I think that is a good start for uh, for a young man uh, from Norway. Yeah, and you know, you said something there about Haaland dropping into the middle of the park. Has because I couldn't figure out why he took him off. Because I'm thinking, why are you taking this guy off with this? 
what, there's still like 18 minutes to go, something like that. Do you think that maybe is part of the reason? He's taking them off and then when he gets them in the dressing room, he's going, right, if you keep doing that, I'm going to keep taking you off. You need to stay up front. That's where I want you. Do you think, I mean, is that a reason? Is that plausible? Because I can't think why else you would take them off unless you try to send some sort of message. And if, is that the message? I, I don't think so, uh, uh, Stevie. I, I understand what you're saying because he he does he, he didn't go a lot down to midfield today. But I was at the press conference of Pep on Friday, and that was more like a, what shall I say a seminar that he tried to understand his ideas and all that. And he said at this stage of the season he doesn't want to rotate a lot because there is just seven days between the games, and he will keep on rotating. So I think that he is in a stage now that he wants to give players the chance, sm small chance, like Alvarez, you, you know that you will need him during the season. So then you will give him some minutes and then he puts it on. Having said that, of course, Erling as a striker would like to stay on at the end because there are some free goals then. Or in the first game, he wanted a hat trick and he was a bit annoyed about that. But I think that Pep is doing right there. Uh, of course, uh, a number nine will never want to be taken off. But I think it's, it's wise when, when you know that this is an unbelievable long season. Uh, uh, although there is this World Cup, this is a small tournament in the middle. But still, to